Hey everybody, welcome to the conclusion of a very scuffed Alita run right now. And it's not scuffed because of the run itself, it's scuffed because I'm scuffed. So, I'm recording this right now at like 6am. This is kind of the day after the big sickness. I slept most of yesterday, I still feel a little bit sick this morning, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. But, I can't sleep anymore, so I was like, you know what? I'll wake up, I'll confuse the cats because they think it's breakfast. But... I cannot feed them right now. I cannot set a dangerous precedent that, you know, feeding time is six in the morning when it's dark because that's when they'll wake me up. So, uh, anyway, they're going to be running around the office excited because they're confused by what's happening. The other reason why this is scuffed is normally I record Alina runs in a single block and I've recorded this over three different blocks. So, forgive me if I forget some certain specifics about the run. I'm aware that we were playing as a slave. We had the crane charm. We have a storm brace so we get stronger over time. We've just picked up the fortune bracer so that a, a random card in my starting hand will get reduced to zero at the start of a fight, which could be big because some of my cards do cost more than one and getting a, a two energy discount is pretty big in this game. Like if we can hit a parry, it'd be phenomenal. Shield charge is really good. If we hit the fireball, it's great. And kind of, this build started as a status effect build, but it's now evolved with two forms of oil into a fire build. And I think the fire build is the strongest one in the game. I still would like some more ignition sources, as I've called this, just to really you know, stack that burn on. But we have the the premise of a, a good win. Now, we've not really showed off oil yet, which doubles your burn when you upgrade to triples it. But against bosses with huge health pools, and on this floor we'll have bosses with huge health pools, Hopefully we can stack like two or three hundred burn and you'll see the real strength of it. Other than that, we just need survival abilities if we're going to go for this burn build, which, you know, we've we've kind of gone down that path now that we're doing the burn build. Uh, then in terms of weapons, we have the, the meme hammer upgraded, which is a good defensive tool. Also gives me status effects, which gives me strength. We have this Osafune, which I'd quite like to start with because it gives you a little bit of focus. And I have the recurve both I need range. And we've basically just been using this additional slot as a consumable. Right, without further ado, let's get to the third floor enemies. And they can be a little bit spicy. So these guys possess mannequins. If you attack them, they go into like a nullify mode where they cannot take any more damage. But to like, you know, to make them a little bit weaker, they also do less damage. So their attack damage gets reduced by 50%. So dealing damage to them is a good defensive tool. This was the fortune target. So you can see it's gone green, which means it was reduced in energy cost. So we got a one energy discount on a basic strike. Not great, but hey ho. I mean, I say not great. It's probably the worst target you could have hit. But it was the most likely target to hit. Anyway. Now, this guy, all he does is going to channel these guys for a while, then he'll channel himself. He has spiky as well, which is very annoying. Which means if I hit him, I'll take damage. But what I think I'm going to do is move here. I intend to play the wound. And then I'm just going to throw the fireball here to push him to the wall and interrupt his channel. And then I'll wind up for my next attack. I guess I can also... Actually, maybe I'll do this as well. Yeah. It does use my kinetic. But putting you on 10 armor means I can just interrupt him whenever I want, really, now. Which is pretty handy. Okay, so these guys are doing 24 damage. It's kind of annoying for my build, honestly. I might even use the throw dirt here just to do something a little bit more interesting. Because <clears throat> obviously if I backstab and put vulnerable on them, they just go into the nullify state, which is no use to anyone. I think I will do, actually. I'm going to move here. Hang on a minute. 
If this activates after receiving damage, does this proc it? I don't know. No. Okay, that's a really niche interaction. Holy shit, I've never seen that before. If you do zero damage to put vulnerable on them, it doesn't proc the nullify. That's really good intel. Because now what I can also do is put more vulnerable on you. Nullify does, you know, take down over turns. You can see he's gone into his broken form. We'll play the wound, and also we'll put some burn on him. Well, you can see now with, like, the harvest, it would do zero. I'm not going to do it because it gives me a fatigue, and I don't really want fatigues right now. And now he goes back together again, and he does 24 damage, and that's kind of his cycle. Okay, I think we shuffle here. I think I use the crossbow power now. To give you a little branding, push you away, play the wound, and reload. God's grant me the power of lightning, so he's going to charge himself with electricity, which is very annoying because that means every time they hit me, they'll do shock damage, I think it's called, and shock will, you know. It will make... Actually, you don't know. It means that if I play a card, I think I take one damage. Unless I play it, which also does one damage. So it's very frustrating. Hmm... Just trying to think how I want to do this. What have I got in my deck with one more trick? I do have an oil coming up. But I don't really want to use that. I'm just being very wary right now that... I'm pretty close to getting trapped in the corner. <clears throat> okay, here's what we do. We shuffle here. I don't really rate the Spear Potion, by the way. So Spear Potion gives you an effect called Pierce. Which means that you don't hit armor, you just hit the health directly. It sounds good because, you know, that for some enemies that halves basically their total health. However, it's really useful sometimes, you know, to hit the armor to break an enemy. So I think it's kind of bad. I think it's almost a disadvantage in most cases. There are, there's one specific enemy where it's very strong against, which has just armor and like 5 HP. Other than that, it's kind of worthless, so I'm probably not going to take it even. I'd rather take a rock than the spear potion. That's how I value it. Anyway, I'm going to charge over here so I don't get trapped in the corner. I'm then going to push this guy over here so I don't take damage. We do lose the vulnerability hit here, but I can live with that. Then the question is, do I burn in flames or play the wound? Honestly, I play the wound. This guy's not actually attacking, so I can just sit next to him. So I will. I think that's all my old wounds gone. Right, he's ready to attack now. And he's a little bit of a spicy character. We might even have to take some... hits here. Now, I can give him a good old meme hammering and spin him around. What I also do is the bow. I could also just hit him once. I could also slam away. Actually, that's not the worst idea. Because I can get a stun off then. Yeah, let me leave you there. Push you into your friend. You're both stunned. I guess we equip... Actually, no, we can equip the bow and shoot you. Shooting him is an option. Shoot him, reload, play the fatigue, and end turn. 
God's grant me the power to heal. So this is the other nerd thing he does. He heals his allies. However, I can shuffle here and I can interrupt you. Now the one slight disadvantage of stunning these guys, by the way, is when they're stunned, they can't undo nullify, so he still has nullify on right now. Which is really fucking annoying. That being said, it doesn't matter that much. Let's parry him so I get some blocks so the spike he doesn't hit me. Let's give him a little strike. I don't have I got coming up. Hmm, I could, could have grabbed a backstab, honestly, potentially. I think this is a battle that we don't really benefit from fire from. I think I will just pop the thing fast. Uh, kind of unlucky to draw three things of one cost. I'll just keep chopping. Right, they've unstunned now. This guy still has Electrify on. Hmm... I don't have any more pushes. Uh, I might just have to hit this guy a little bit. I just eat the hits. Yeah, I think I will. I think I'm running a little bit of a risk right now. Once this guy goes, it becomes way easier as well. We'll play Boarding Flames. I heal for four anyway next time, so I've basically taken two damage here. Right. Lash out is a kill. Wind up. Lash out. And this is going to be one of the rare occasions how you shield charge its three energy move. But we should be good now. Most of my attacks will kill it. Funny. But we have the answer to that. We just move away. I can also do one, no, I can't one more trick. We have no more cards. All right, move here, throw a rock at him. Play the fatigue. Now, basically everything kills him. That'll do. Ooh, fast reload, draw two cards, discard one card, reload your weapon. Actually pretty useful. This is very good for obviously a bow focus build. We do have a bow in our build, so, you know, it's not completely worthless. Either way, it's still... It's still like a cycling cards. Because you're drawing two, you discard one, you use the card itself, so it's net neutral. And it ha only has an added benefit for a bow. Fortify is also not the absolute worst thing. In fact, it might even be the correct play right now. Because I don't have that many answers. And by answers, I mean answers to huge attacks. Fortify is not my favorite answer to it, but it's a pretty good one. And it works well with shield charge. I think I will grab a fortify. And as I said, I just don't value the spear potion. I will not take it. I will sell a rock load to throw a spear at someone. Right, the one other other thing I'll just mention about this floor, and this layout is so annoying for it. Normally I would not fight an elite on this floor, or I would try not to. They are super dangerous in this floor. Honestly, it might be... I was going to say maybe even the hardest enemies in the game are these elites. I wouldn't say that, but they kind of test like niche aspects. So, two of them test like extreme movement or extreme range. And then the other guy's not too bad. He's kind of like, you can catch him with everything. But you can get into builds where you just can't really hurt these guys. And they're more annoying than like fighting, for example, the Jester Prince, the final boss. Even fighting the demon. So I normally try to avoid them. Unfortunately, if you want to fight the demon, by the way, spoilers, the final boss is someone called the demon of the arena. But you have to meet a criteria to reach him, which is getting this soul shot so we have to do this fight and i like to do the fight for completion unfortunately this means i have to fight an elite to fight the demon also i would like to take my two rests the other rest is behind an elite so i might actually forgo a rest here 
just enough fight this elite. But we'll see how good we're feeling. Anyway, I think I will take this event. I'm a little bit down on health. Some events do have like minor heals on it, so it's nice to know if we're going to get a heal. Also, sometimes they give you a bad card and we can just meditate it out immediately. Okay, do I want to lose 50 gold and receive a random consumable? You see a strange machine with a sign on it. Insert coin for prizes. An overwhelming sense of curiosity urges you to find out what's inside. Game, don't tell me what to feel. I'm actually going to leave because I'm not that interested in the consumable. I really want the money right now. In fact, I might even use the money right now. I kind of want to make Osafune pop a little bit better. But I think the thing that actually gives me the most benefit right now is putting more power moves in the recurve bow. And I can afford another power move on the recurve bow, I believe. I think it's 400. The next upgrade. But I'll do this fight first. Okay, it's the final forms of the dog boys. The beasties. The beastie boys. <laughs> Again, other disadvantage of the Fortune Bracer, it did discount a wound this time. I didn't even think about that as being the worst option. But that's pretty obnoxious. So we discounted a wound. I guess it makes it easy for me to play it. Right. So all these guys try and hold me. This guy is massive, by the way, so I can't knock him back. He is susceptible, though, to the Meme Hammer. Also, I forgot to equip the Katana at the start of the battle. I'm dumb. And uh, Beastmaster basically just buffs people. He buffs his Beastie Boys. Now, here's a question. Do I feel happy enough to fight the Beastie Boys? Here. Because I could do some big AoE cleaving right now with a backstab to hit both of them. And then wind up strike. It's pretty big damage. In fact, I think I will go for this. I only have one throwable is the scary thing to break the hold because both of them will grapple me next turn. But I do have the bow to push someone away. But that would restrict me in movement. The, the, safe, the safe option is to move here instead. Because I never get caught out then. But I will be surrounded next turn. I think I'm going to go balls to the walls. Give them a damn good thrashing. We wind up. Like, this is huge damage. We might even be able to just kill them both next turn. Then I can power through and play the wound. Right, they all get a strength buff. We are now, like, giga surrounded, which is very scary. But we have answers, thankfully. That could have gone really wrong, honestly. That was actually kind of dumb. <laughs> I take that back. This was a really dumb play. I can parry for 36 block. This is the, the advantage of parry with the AoE weapon. And fortunately, I've gained the movement ability slam, which lets me get out of this little pickle. But yeah, other than that, this hand was not very good. All right, parry. Slam to the wall. And I'll play a wound. Right, I need to be careful because this guy is going to pin me in the corner next turn. You have 11 health. I, be I believe these guys can actually heal one another, so I kind of need to deal with you. Let's move here. I'm actually going to equip the bow, sorry. I will shoot you. To kill you. I will reload with a strike. I will brand you. You know what? Think fast, Alina. I will reload with the fortify. I will shoot you with harvest. I will play the wound. I will reload. Yay, just do the heal. Right. Right, you scumbags. This is what I've been waiting for. The power of the meme hammer compels you to spin, baby. Right, he's now hitting two of his friends for 25. He's also knocking them back. 
Unfortunately, there's a big heal coming off here. He's probably going to heal this guy. So I don't really gain that much from this play, honestly. But we're getting stronger, remember. So I'm not too bothered. Uh, we have to finish the turn with the meme hammer, so I will. And I'll play fatigue. Bam! He heals him back up. He was on two health. But now I can spin him around again if I want to. The power of the meme. Uh, shield potion is kind of useful. It's like a pseudo heal. Uh, yeah, the power of the meme compels you. Spin around, baby. So he's going to kill no one. All right. Right, they get stronger. You're going for a heal again. It's almost certainly on the guy with 2 HP. Again, the power of the meme can compel you. But it's the last time it can compel you, so... Have to be a little bit careful here. So that guy's dead, because he will go off before the healer. Then, remember this guy is massive, so I can't actually push him with this. So he's just do 10 damage. I'll take it. I'll hit you. I'll hit you. I'll, while you have vulnerable on you, I'll hurl this for 9. And I'll take the shield potion. And then we'll play 3 fatigues. So he dies. He's going to heal someone else now. And I kind of need a, a way to move out of this. I don't have it. So unless I can kill him this turn, I'm going to take 28 damage. And I don't have it. Oh, also he's attacking me there. So I have to be a little bit cautious. I have to be a little bit careful here. Alright, let's move here. Smack. Smack. Power through. Drink that. So we take 14 damage. It's not a lot. It's kind of annoying though. He holds me now. You're pinning me into the corner. But fortunately we got parry. Also it doesn't really matter because I'm going to kill him. So we gain 40 block. I kill him. And I'll put board. I'll, yeah I'll put burning flames on honestly just to get rid of it. Release your power, my dear old children. He's rousing them. A little Ronnie Rouser. Okay, wind up, latch out, harvest is a kill. Gives me an energy back. I will just set these tiles on fire because it hurts them more than it hurts me. <clears throat> and I was just fighting this guy. Who is not that scary. He says. Burn him a little bit more. Equip the bow. Shoot him. Reload. Shoot him. And turn. Hello, Millie. Would you like up? He would. 21 damages. We also have the, the throw dirt. Well, let's just move next to him. Let's equip the katana so I remember next time that I need a katana. Wind up and give him a little slap. Again, we took more damage than I would have liked there. Okay, War Cry. So this gives me 50% more damage on the turn I use this. Aye, it gives me something called Trance. It's not too bad, but I don't think I need it with Wind Up. It's kind of frustrating. Sometimes you think Wind Up plus War Cry would be a good hand, but you kind of would prefer the extra card to do damage. I, mean, I feel like it happens so often that I draw one but walk right in my hand when I have both of them. It's not kind of one or the other. The, the shuffle, which I sometimes call the truffle shuffle, lets me swap position with the target, which is very useful for defense. It is more useful in certain circumstances, I will admit. But honestly, it's getting more useful. It's probably at its least useful early in the game, and it becomes better as we go on. And I would deem it as an answer to your problem. The best defense is then a card that I, for the 
basically the entire game's history. I know it came out full release recently, but since early access, you know, with the thing, I don't rate this card that highly. I did have a build recently where it won me a run on this difficulty, and it kind of redeemed itself. So this expends all of your block, and it does a damage for each. The real power of this card, though, is if you can upgrade it, it does twice the block that you have as damage which is a lot of damage it's potentially a good finisher it's pretty good for the ow millie don't bite me it's pretty good for the block build as you might imagine the reason i dislike it is because you spend all this time getting block to then blow it all on the best defense just kind of feels like a, a worthless endeavor and often i feel like you're using the best defense and you're stuck next to an enemy so it works pretty well with bow builds. There's also the Zwei Hand, which we saw in a previous episode, where it says, like, you know, gain block equal to damage you do is the power weapon of the weapon. That can turn this into a card that's, like, pseudo-double your block, which is very good then for the block build. So that's a, a very niche scenario where this card is actually phenomenal in a deck. I've never even had that build before. It's just a theoretical deck that I've heard is very strong. Because you can imagine if you upgrade best defense, if you put up, like, 30 block, which isn't that unreasonable when you focus on it, you hit someone with the best defense with a Zwei Hander. You use the power move, it turns into 60 block. And that's basically an answer to all the very dangerous enemies. Other than the very final like bosses who can do, at this difficulty, 100 damage of a turn. Anyway, I'm waffling now. I'm taking Shuffle. I will then take a sword as a throwable, and I'll sell the bow. Hello, Millie. Yeah, I love you too. Have a little Eskimo kiss with you. You are going a little bit psychotic, so I think you want breakfast, don't you? It's too early for breakfast. Listen, if I feed you now, you'll have me up at six every morning for food. And I don't want that lifestyle, okay? Right, let me go to the shop. The other thing I could do is grab... No, I can't even grab another power move. Wait, that would have been a misplay. Do I want another power move on the bow? I mean, I do. It does cost me 400, though, and it's something I don't use that often. And again, spoiler, the demon is massive, so I can't actually use it against him. And really, everything I'm doing now should be a preparation for the demon fight. This cat is going crazy, by the way. Will you get off my mouse mat? Oh, turbo strokes. Actually, I'm going to go for cards. I'm going to flip-flop. Oh, they've changed the text of this. This used to be called Bloodthirsty, I think. Now called Ferocity. Uh, draw a card for each surrounding unit. Costs zero. Uh, it's not a bad card, but I very rarely take this, strangely. Normally when, normally when you're surrounded by units, you want to move away from the units. Again, it's kind of a niche build that this is really good in. And it just doesn't come up that often. It's kind of good for the block build. I guess like a parry build. I do have parry in there. But I wouldn't say I'm building around it. Oh, look at this cat. She just wants all the love. Now, I could pay to remove a card. And I think that's a pretty good option. Remove a strike, which makes my fortunes more likely to hit something good. Although we are adding, you know, a wound to my hand every turn. So we always have that one in, whatever it is, seven chance. One in six chance that I hit a wound. Which is pretty bad. I think I will remove a card, though. Let's get rid of a strike. And I think I will refresh this. There was nothing else here that I really wanted. Millie, can you please not bite me? <laughs> ah, run and gun is interesting. So this, again, is a power that really works well with the bow build. So whenever you move, I reload my weapon and draw a card. So even without a bow build, run and gun means that if I move... And I do have a decent amount of movement options. I will draw a card, which is pretty useful. What is this cat? You're on your back, on my knee. I'm holding you with my hand. You are aware you're falling off. This weird girl. Uh, there's also Zero Zone here, which gives you something called Hyper Focus and reduces all costs in your hand to zero and draws you two cards. This is kind of a funny option. All right, this cat has to go now. You've overstayed your welcome. Goodbye. 
No biting me. See you later. So yeah, this is kind of built around the focus build, but it's like, I call it like the, the big build as well, where you pick cards which cost like two or more and try and discount them. Because this is one of the few discount cards. It could be pretty good, but I do have a lot of zero cost cards in my deck anyway. The hyper focus, which means that your focus doesn't dissipate on your first attack each turn, is kind of meaningless. But you know, two mana, draw two cards. You also can't draw anymore on that turn as well, just as an FYI. But it's almost certainly going to discount by more than two. So this is a, a decent card. I think we don't save it as a finisher, we just blow it. Also, I, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, Unlock Mind is possibly the most changed card in this game. This doubles the effect of the next power you play. I still think this card is terrible. <laughs> it used to cost one and have the opener modifier. Then it cost zero and uh, had the opener modifier. Then it removed the opener modifier. And I just don't think it's good. I think now when it upgrades, you get... Oh, it gets retained now. So that you can hold in your hand to the perfect moment. Every time I had like a power in my deck that I wanted to duplicate, I could never draw unlocked mine with it. They just it just never, you know, came together. Uh it's probably in its strongest state, but I'm not even gonna consider it for this build. We haven't actually got a good power right now, I would say. I honestly think boarding flames is kind of a negative for my build. I could pay 300 to remove a card. That might even be the, the optimal play right now. Trump card I don't really like either. Uh, no pain, no gain is okay. Lose 4 HP, gain an energy, draw a card. And the final blow just is the final blows. Alright, I'm taking Zero Zone. It's just more fun. There's nothing I want to swap the colour of either. Because everything I'm doing is basically two-handed. Right. I think I'm going to do this Meditate. I'm actually considering creating, but I will forget. Let's get rid of more Strikes. I'm going to work up this column a little bit. Ooh, this is a weird battle. You don't see this one that often. It's a bunch of marionettes. <laughs> Discounted the wound again. You love to hate to see it. Uh, it's also a really annoying fight for zero zone. And you don't really want to zero zone, well, in this build, I don't want to zero zone on the first turn, necessarily. Because I don't have any strength. That being said, though, there is a pretty powerful play here. I can fortify into shield charge, which is the other reason why I grab fortify. Because it makes my shield charge do 30 more damage, which in the early game is a lot of damage. But how do I want to do this, exactly? I guess I kind of want to go here. Fortify Shield Charge. That's going to give me 30 block. He will then do 12 damage. Then I Zero Zone. This could be a wild turn, by the way. This could be like a very movingly wild turn. Let's do it. It, it just seems fun. Fortify, wound, shit. No, I can do it. We zero zone. My shield charge becomes free. We discounted a fireball, that's excellent. Now, think fast won't work is the other, the downside. Uh, we do that. So, I'm currently taking... Six damagios. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yes. Everyone's just in a slightly annoying position. God, there's so many move options here, potentially. 
it's actually blowing my mind a little bit. Okay, I have an idea. Remember this thing fast as well. I can't draw anymore. Turn him around. Slam over here. Fireball here. This fireball hits two people. It doesn't do the damage, but it does put the burn on. It puts the burn on. And then if I was really, really worried about the damage I was taking, which I'm already blocking everything, I would have thrown a sword at you to do, you know, take 12 less damage. And this turn I made no attack. So I actually, I'm going to gain more focus. She's really nice. I did put myself against the wall, though. Okay, it's a pretty fun turn again. Give me the meme hammer. Give me 28 block. Lovely. Ah, I also had barricade from last turn because of the shield charge. Nice. Uh, again, burn is a pretty good answer to these guys, so I think I might just keep burning you. And then I'll play the wound. By the way, the, the burn damage just go through this nullify, which is why I said it's a pretty good answer to them. Okay. Now we kind of want some better answers. <clears throat> and that might mean I use the bow. Double the burn here would give me eight burn on you, so I only need to do three damage to you. Which we can do. So look at me, I'm using oil. Oh god, no, I... That's actually really annoying. Uh... <laughs> I forgot my strength is neutral right now. I still have answers here. Push you away. I just shoot someone. That's the answer. And by someone, I mean you. Then we play the wounds. Then I reload. He'll pop to fire. Okay. This is interesting. We have throw dirt, which is an AOE interrupt. And we have a bunch of guys stood in front of me. So I think we take this opportunity to, you know, hurt them. Give him a smash. Give him a throw dirt. Wind me up, baby. Play the wound. Play the fatigue. Next round. Okay, I should have moved. <laughs> I thought like, oh, they can't surround me this turn. Didn't expect for someone just to move out of the way. Very gentlemanly of you. Still, we have answers to this turn. The answer being cry. No. The answer is if I stun you. I guess one of the answers could be just grab parry. That's a pretty good answer, honestly. Alright, let's do it. I am getting a little bit bullied right now, though. I did it in the wrong order. I kinetic the shield charge. It's still fine. We'll still block everything, but I should have done more damage. And let's get our strength going a little bit faster. Okay, he's still stunned, which is phenomenal. This might be one of those weird turns where it makes sense to fireball myself. I mean, I'm not getting out of this easily, so... Let's think fast this turn. Okay, shield charge changes things a little bit. <coughs> it does get me out of the hate corner a little bit. I'd still be in a situation though right now where I'm taking 24 damage. 
from these two guys. Hmm. It's actually optimal to still to do that, right? No, it can't be. He would be stunned, so I don't have to worry about him. I get hit. Actually, what if I do the opposite? What if I push this guy this way? I fireball the wall, which will burn this guy. It will push you that way. It will push you that way. Yeah, that's, that's a smart man play. But do I want to fire surge first? No, you're in an orientation that doesn't matter. I also still have a bow charge. Yeah, I can take zero damage this turn. There is a way out. Shield charge. Oh, I do hit myself though. Although this is again, this is an ultra niche interaction. I've only ever seen this one time. If I knock myself into the enemy, I stun him. So I would take 12 damage to stop myself taking 12 damage. So it is the optimal play, I think. I can then brand you. Burn you both. Hit myself, stun you. And then reload. Ah, I haven't got Burning Flames on as well. I forgot about the burn damage I'm going to be taking. But we did do a lot of stunning there. This guy is going to pop in two turns. So I would rather just get away from him. Protective Ward is phenomenal. Very happy for that. Okay, we are probably... No, we're not going to stand in fire. That's stupid. Let's move here. I guess I'll harvest you. I should not have the bow equipped. This does nothing. Yeah, enter. Alright, that guy pops next turn. So we don't have to worry about you. You pop the turn afterwards, so I don't necessarily need to worry about you either. So I think I can, I'm just going to move here. Fire search, wind up, play the two fatigues. And equip the katana so I'm doing more damage. I could always just harvest this guy as well just for, you know, the sake of it. To make myself feel happier. There is a, a reason to do this by the way, but not in this build. If, it, uh, if you have an effect that says if you kill an enemy, this happens. Burn doesn't trigger as your kill. It counts as like an environmental kill. So you have to get the final hit. It's kind of the one like slight annoyance of this build. But it's still not too bad. Anyway, let me push you away. Goodbye. Let me set you on fire. Let me reload and play fatigue. We are, as you can see, this floor is pretty hard. We are taking some more and more damage. This was nearly a hyper scuffed hand as well. All right, let me put the katana on. I finish you. Well, that was a pretty tough room, honestly. Uh, flaming trap could be good. It's another way to apply burn and good CC. And I kind of like CC. I'll take a crippling blow gun over the sword, and I'll just sell the rest. I'm actually going to take this fight now. This is such a scuffed floor layout as well, by the way. It's a really hard floor, honestly. Okay, we, we're going to cyberbully this Hellhound. Just as an FYI. The power of the Truffle Shuffle compels you. He admittedly is doing a charge and a push. So if I Truffle Shuffle him into the center of the map, because by the way, we're getting hit for 86 damage right now. I am going to get stunned from it. Unless I move. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I can just move. 
Okay, equip the bow. Brand got discounted, by the way, which is very nice. Brand this pleb over here. Then we'll do a truffle shuffle. And I will do a shield charge over here. I do take the wound as damage, which is annoying. But I think I'd rather take the wound damage than be stunned. Oh, I forgot that was the way that round that was going to play out as well. Oh my god, he's just charging through his friend. He does not care. Oh my god, I forgot these are the little lobbers. So they can throw something called mini bangers. And it's really fucking annoying. Ah. Huh. We're in trouble here. Not super trouble. Actually, no, we're not in any trouble. We're completely fine. Okay, this is slightly annoying, but bear with me. I do zero damage to put vulnerable on you. I kill you, which gives me an energy back because it's harvest. I one more trick into slam. I slam a rammer over here. I pick up the rock. I play the wounds. I play the boarding flames. I hit you. I play the fatigue. So he's going to charge in first, and he's going to get hit by mini bangers for 30. And now you're charging me, but I think you go an additional tile, so you have to be a little bit careful again. Just a little bit. This could again be a great turn for the meme hammer. I think I will meme hammer you, honestly. You're just shooting adjacent. No, you're shooting in a line. Ah, that's okay. We can work with that. By the way, I think this is a turn we zero zone. Move here, zero zone. Spinning right round, baby right rounds. He's now charging straight to the wall. If an enemy charges at a wall, they get stunned. I do have a rock on the ground. I might as well throw it. Why not? We'll be playing the wound. Uh, I might as well let that go through as well. <sighs> That's not the right play. Uh, God, how do I use this fireball proactively? I can't, right? I guess I can just stun him, but I think it's better just not to use the fireball. Uh, I'll burn you. Yeah, this isn't as good a turn as I was hoping it would be. I can hit you. I guess I get to play the fatigue this way. He's going to get shot as well. He gets shot and killed. Mini bangers are probably coming up. Yep, here come the mini bangers. You're not doing anything. So I could just move here. I kind of want to deal with this guy. He's probably the biggest threat right now. By the way, you can mini... Uh, sorry, mini banger. Mini... Mi, mini meme? You can meme hammer this guy as well to spin him around. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is move here. And just shoot him into the wall to stun him. This guy's going to charge me at some point, so I'll just throw a trap here. And I think we play the wound. I'm just toying with thinking fast. Actually, I'm going to. Think fast. It draws me a reload. I get to play the wind-up. We don't really care about losing the strike. And we draw oil next, which isn't a terrible draw. It's not what I wanted, though. Yeah, I predicted him. So he's going to run into the flaming trap next, which is excellent news for me. <coughs> <coughs> okay. I think we fire surge, oil him, lash out at him, strike him. Right, you're immobilized, so I don't have to worry about you for a little while. You're doing 34, but it's a line attack. Uh, how about I just bully you into the wall? I'm just toying with 
whether or not to play the Fortify right now, by the way, because I, I gained Barricade doing that. So I would keep 15 block for next turn. And realistically, I don't think I'm going to need this card anymore, so I think I will just play it. Okay, we should be fine here. Give me the Meme Hammer. Spin him around. Don't even need to spin him around now that I look at things. Because he's dead. Play the Wound. Power me through. And... You know what? We don't need to slam anymore either. Let's just get out of my deck. Alright, this guy has to reload this turn. Unlucky for you. I've been studying the blade while you've been studying the bow. And the blade beats the bow. Ah! Okay, remember I said on a previous run that there's one good card with Deathmark? This is it. It's kind of intriguing. It's really hard to say when when you try and get the Demon Slayer weapon. I'm probably at the point now where it's something I can't really take anymore. But doing 25% extra damage to an enemy is super powerful. So I'm not going to take this, but I, I kind of do rate this power. Especially if you can dupe it. When you upgrade it, it goes to 50% as well. If you get 50% upgrade... Sorry. If you get the upgrade and dupe it, it stacks. It's insane. You can truly destroy enemies with it. But it's like the only deathmark support in the game, so it makes the build really weird. Uh, Beef up, by the way, is just gain one strength. So, again, this cycles around your deck. You get stronger over time. I'm not going to take it. Skip. Upgraded, it does two, which is probably worth it. Well, I, I, I'm not about that lifestyle. Uh, that being said as well, hang on a minute. I might take this lightning potion instead of a throwable. Because this will let me get the wounds removed for free as well for two rounds, which is pretty powerful. Anyway, give me the event and I'm going to hope for another Healy event. Ah! A wealthy looking collector approaches you claiming to be an admirer of your performances. He offers to buy one of your weapons for a handsome price so that you may add it to his collection. For some reason, you can hear him breathing heavily. So this guy will buy the weapons in your hand right now. It, we have a two-handed weapon, therefore he only wants Osafune. This can be a really powerful event if you get it in the early game. Like, if you have a rusty dagger, it's still like 250. It doesn't scale. But at this point, the money is not worth it compared to the weapon. I'm going to leave. And Osafune is a pretty good weapon. This means that I'm probably never going to get a bad card now that I need to remove other than my strikes. So I'll just forget strikes. Goodbye. And I think we'll do this fight so I have a heal. Okay, these two big crushers scare me a little bit. So they like to... They like to treat me as a Goomba and they're Mario. They... They try and... What's the word for it? They try and harness the energy of Chris Pratt. <laughs> and they will just jump on me. And they do a big alien attack. It's basically like the Mother Slime from the previous episode. It's like a Mega Crush attack. So you kind of need big movement or big defense to get out of it. What I will say though is you can meme hammer them to spin them around and they'll jump in different directions. That's pretty fun. So we do have an answer to it. What I think we'll do instead, though, is take the safer option. Sorry, I was considering moving here and just slamming people around, but I don't think I've got the damage for that. We're, we're a slow burner. I think I backstab you. I'm toying with zero zoning, honestly. But I don't think it's a great zero zone opportunity, so I'm going to say no. I will play the wound, though. I will hit you. So part of the reasons of my thinking there, by the way, was that I was considering trying to hit as many people with a great hammer as possible to zero zone into power throw. But I just didn't have enough attack cards to make it happen. I'm a little bit concerned that my throw ball is going to do zero damage next turn. But I think I can just kill the dog. Here's the Mega Crush attack. They have no prep time, by the way. They just go for it. They don't give a damn.
Okay. I have... I have an answer. It's not necessarily the best one, but it's... Something. So the rock does do zero damage, as we you know, knew. I'm going to harvest you to interrupt. I'm then going to shield charge into you. To get out of the Mega Crush range. I'm going to throw a Flaming Trap here, because I know where he's going to land. Then I'll play the wound. And I'll lash out at you. Right, he kills him. I now held again, but this time my rock will do one damage. So I'm pretty content with that. Who's mega crushing now? It's you. You're just hitting your friend though. What a weird play. Speaking of kind of weird plays, wind up strike is exactly lethal. That health potion is pretty nice, honestly. I would have also really liked to upgrade this protective ward. I mentioned it, I think, in episode one when I got it. This does a, like, seven health heal when you upgrade it. It's, I've not really showed off protective ward, honestly, this run. It's just never come up with the perfect opportunity. I'm telling you, this card is insane. Okay, you're doing 23 damage. I have got answers here. I have answers. Right, let me move to the health potion and just sup it. It's only 10 health, but it's better than nothing. Then I'll play the wound. I will... Hmm. I'll just fortify this, honestly. I'm just thinking, do I want to grab something at one cost? I guess I want to get brand. It's pretty good. And we have a bunch of fire enablers coming up. So you push me. Right, they're massive so you can't knock them back. Just as an FYI. I wish I wasn't in the corner. I could not be in the corner. That's the answer. Uh, I don't quite have the energy to do everything, but I'd rather throw the fireball. Then do the fire surge. <clears throat> okay. Who's mega crushing? It's you. Is it the time to do the, the super meme? No, it isn't. We will save memeing for another day. Instead, I'll give you a truffle shuffle. <laughs> I love the truffle shuffle. It's so good. And I think I will swap this around now so that I can get a power through off this turn. Actually, I won't get a power through off this turn. Oh, whatever. I do an additional... No, I will get a power through off this turn. But only for one. And he's, you know, 13 damage away now from being broken. This could be the zero zone turn. And by could, I'm zero zoning 1000%. Move here. Zero zone... That's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm true to my draw option. But we have an escape, so I'm not too worried. Uh, wind up. Strike breaks this guy. I will shield charge you. I will throw oil at both of you. And then... Later! I'll pick up the rock. Right, that guy's stunned for a turn. Now if I can do 22 damage, I can break the other guy, which I can. Move, brand, strike. And I might as well blow this oil as well. Plus 14 burn, now taking 21 burn. That is a lot of burn, by the way. I will <laughs> trap myself in a little bit with a flaming trap. There you go. Very predictable. And this is kind of your axis, honestly. Because now I'm just going to play keep away and burn you. So this guy is dead. 27 burn stats. He's going to die in three turns, like whatever happens. It's so powerful. We should equip the katana now so that I'm scaling. Uh, he's, he's not dead. I have to do two damage to him. 
Or I can, you know, just kill him. Okay, we're going through... Ho, 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 ho. Ho, I'll take a flurry. Uh, we're going through a little power spike right now, and I, I like it. We have the rest. Okay. I I have to do the elites now. And I'm a little bit scared. Ah, this is the easiest elite on this floor, but he has precognition. So this guy, I'm not going to say he's easy. He is counted by the meme hammer to some degree. So that's a good start. Unfortunately, he kind of punishes slower builds. He gets faster and faster. We'll just do the fight. So this little cross on it is something called precognition, as I said. He will evade the next attack, whatever it is. He he don't care. And it's very annoying. However, if you try to do a knockback onto him, even if he evades, the knockback still goes through. I think the meme hammer still goes through as well if you don't do no damage. But I'm not going to take that risk. This is the other reason why you keep hurlables. To break precognition. Now, like the elite on the second floor who I was worried about, this guy doesn't gain precognition every turn. So once I've, I've broke it now, I've got a little bit of a respite, which is pretty nice. Anyway, let's give him a little meme. So his deal, you might be going like, oh, he's doing six damage. Uh, he does something called blasts of immobilization or something, or blasts of shackles. He literally immobilizes you to the ground, then he does a huge AoE attack. And basically, you get fucked. It, it, it's probably insane at this difficulty as well. I can't remember exactly the damage, but it's probably up turn one, like cycle one, 60 damage. It's like four times 20, not four times 20. It's probably like four times 15 or something early on. It's crazy. If you don't have an answer to it, you're basically dead. Anyway, let me throw a flaming trap here because he normally tries to get away from you a little bit. I'll play the wound. And honestly, I think this is a difficult one. I think I'm going to parry. I'm just putting an extra nine damage. I'm a little bit spooked by this guy. Hello again, Millie. I see you've opened the office door. Stop moving. Right. The other thing I can do to this guy is that I can push him into the wall with the bow. And stun him. Which is another pretty good answer for him. Alright. I think we flurry. Which, by the way, the two times attacks gives you two fatigues. Which is pretty nice with Lash Out, honestly. Then I spin you around again. The power of the meme. We play the wound... I played Born in Flames, mainly to get it out of my deck, honestly. So he does nothing. You're tougher than I expected. This is uninterruptible, what he's doing right now. That's what this gold symbol means. I think if you full-on stun him, though, like if you actually knock him to a wall, he will interrupt it. It's just that throw dirt won't work against it. So, what is the play? I'm actually considering fireballing myself again. So many of my plays end up being, do I just fireball myself? The answer is almost always no, that's not the correct play, but I always try and do it. All right, Millie, why, why? I just have to ask you the question, why? Okay, I can't see the left side of the screen anymore. Please don't get on my keyboard. I know it's the morning. I know the sun is coming up. Hmm. You have to stop biting me as well, please. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to equip the bow. I'm going to push you into my trap. The evade will go off here, but you'll still get pushed. I think. Thank you. Then I will, I will fireball you, I will fire surge you, I will wind up, I will play the wounds. I think that was a pretty good turn. We don't reload the bow, unfortunately. And apparently he doesn't give a damn about the trap. 
I guess it was, uh, yeah, he couldn't be immobilized. It was uninterruptible. So this is like him powering up. Now this is Blaster Shackles Mark II, where it just hits the entire arena instead. Very cool. So, you might want to just instantly meme hammer here, but I'm not going to meme hammer here. I'm actually going to truffle shuffle him. I'd rather use a card to, you know, cancel this attack than use the meme hammer. Especially when I've only got one charge left on the meme hammer now. So, I'm thinking right now of shuffle shuffling, branding. I, I have a decent idea what I want to do here. If Miller will allow me to do it. So we'll shuffle him. He's now shooting the arena. What a fool. I'll hit him. I'll play the wound. And I'll power through. And we're getting stronger and stronger. Right, sorry for a second. I just have to kick this cat out. This little menace of a girl. Again. You are a pain. Also, since when have you been able to open doors? That was a job that your sister used to do for you. Crazy girl. Crazy girl. Okay. Uh, and then turn. Right. Now we're in the dangerous times. Okay, never mind. We're not in the dangerous times anymore. Actually, we're in the, the mildly dangerous time. I'm going for this guy. Throw a flaming trap here. One more trick me, a backstab. Uh, zero zone. It's not a great zero zone here. But I'm, I think it's good enough. We push him into the trap again so he gets more burn on him. Then. We spin him around for the last time. I hit him. I oil him. So this is now put a counter onto him. If I can live for like four turns it and do like some moderate damage he dies the other thing i kind of want to do and i think i will do this i'm going to push him into the wall because my other answer to him is interrupting by stunning him so i could use the bow if i get two attacks i've got two attacks wonderful so we're out of meme hammers meme hammers i don't know why i went you know west country there we do this, push him into the wall, that's his ass. The power is stunning an enemy as well on the burn build. Because he now takes 26 damage, so he'll take another 26 damage on the turn he's stunned. And he's just he's just dead. It's as simple as that. We handled this battle really well, despite the fact that Miller was biting for like 90% of it. Uh, reload with fortify. Shoot. Okay, couldn't quite get the kill with my own hands, but good enough. This, by the way, was the easiest elite on this floor. Uh, this is a meme, by the way. Hurl 10% of your gold to deal an equal amount of damage. It's an AoE attack, but your money is way more valuable. Even on the upgrade, this is not worth it. Reinforced gear is interesting. So this gives your weapons, all your weapons, including the ones in your little holster, an additional power move. And when you upgrade this, it no longer exhausts. So we could have infinite memes. Infinite memes for infinite dreams. Perfect. However, <laughs> the slight problem with this, and I think I might still take reinforced gear, is that I think Improvise is again one of the better cards in the game. So this is deal damage draw a card. If you can upgrade it, it's deal damage draw two cards. That's crazy. It is crazy on the combo build. There is a power that I've kind of kept shtum about. 
which I'm kind of looking for. And it means that every time I hit an enemy, I put up a stack of burn on, which with Pyrophobia also stacks. And it would probably take this burn build to the next level. It's kind of like the combo burn build, but we haven't got it yet. And, we're, you know, we're at the point now where we're probably not going to get it. Equally, though, infinite memes doesn't really help me that much against the demon in particular. It's pretty good against the Jester Prince, though. But I think I'd rather have options. I think I'm going to take Improvise over Reinforced Gear. <laughs> After saying, will we get another Demon Slayer weapon, here's a Demon Slayer weapon. It's still not ideal. I I'm glad I didn't go for that path. I'm also not taking it. I'm selling it, because this is one more damage if I throw it. Also, we should really have that equipped. Perfect. Back to 65 health. Okay, if I'm going to do this, and I think I'm going to do it, let's do the Elite. Okay, this is the scariest guy in the game, in my opinion. So, this guy's deal. He spawns these four magic bullets. His damage equals their health. He literally hurls one at you. So, if I don't get to this guy, and it's the guy with the yellow symbol, you know, like the attack symbol, like the, the, the I'm aiming symbol, if I don't get to that and, like, hurt it, I take 28 damage. And it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if I meme him. He will always hit me. It follows you around the map. This is why this guy is super scary, because if you don't have insane movement and you can't get off the ground quickly, he will punish you. Then... He does this like another two turns. And by the way, these gain more health as the time goes on. He eventually does an attack, I think, on the third turn called Bullet Swarm when he fires everything on the map at you. And it can be crazy because on his next cycle, he summons one more of these little guys. He'll have five of them out there. And, and by the way, if you think, you know, just race down the evil wizard, which I'm possibly going to have to try and do, he can get magic shield like every so often. I can't remember again what it is. Like every three turns he gets magic shield. And he takes 75% less damage. So then you can't race him anymore. So he is a real nerd. I've been discounted a wound, which is very annoying. Like out of all battles where I, you know, want to get a fast start. And I get a, the slowest possible start. All right, get the meme hammer out. We're going to need it. This might be damage limitations. And this really goes to show like why I try to avoid these elites. Also, it couldn't have been any of these guys. It had to be the one literally behind him. Now, I know what you're also thinking. You can stun this guy, by the way, to interrupt an attack. But it's really just... It's like getting a loan. It's just compound interest for later in the game when he does the magic missile attack. Because then he'll have another guy on the board and it'll do like another 28 damage. It's so brutal. So I'd really rather just try and deal with him now. I do also have a 4 to 5 for this turn, so I'm not super duper worried. But I will say I'm pretty worried. Uh, Truffle Shuffle doesn't help me, as I said. It's really only useful for a movement. Oh, and by the way, this evil wizard, he teleports. So you might teleport to the other side of the map after this. And it's just fuck you if he does that. I might even take the damage here. I think that might be the optimal play. I'm going to throw the weapon. Oh, it does nothing. I forgot. I'm at minus two damage right now. This doesn't work. I, I, I'm just checking. Does this work? It doesn't. I'm sure. But I'd still rather be here. Yeah, it follows you. All right, so we take 12 damage. Oh, there we go. He's getting magic shield. Now they've gained 4 HP. So now this one at the other side of the map is attacking me. And he has a 75% damage reduction this turn. So, again, it's just fuck you. The ultimate enemy of, I'm just going to fuck you for the entire game. I might have to stun him this turn. I think it's too dangerous not to. I think he's going to kill me, honestly. I don't think I'm strong enough to fight this guy. I shouldn't have taken this elite. This was stupid. 
This was stupid. Uh, we'll improvise. That interrupts his attack, so he's not attacking me even though the symbol says it is. But I've really limited my damage this turn by the fact that I'm using a bow on it. But we are zero zoning. Oh god, it's like the worst draw as well. Everything's going wrong. Right, the flurry does two. I'm still going to do it because I have nothing better to do. That Molotov is actually huge, by the way. It's really, really huge. Uh, I now have to predict where he might teleport to. Let's just say he's going to teleport here. And then this is worthless to me now. So they still scale, by the way. So here's the compound interest coming in. I have to have damage this turn. Again, oh god, what am I drawing into? I have no answers. He's going to kill me. I don't think there's a way around it. Because he's going to do bullet swarm. No, there is a way around it. I have to... I have to stun him again. Well, this is, you know, 108 damage that's coming in. The only thing that basically lets me live is an interrupt or protective ward. All right, it's clobbering time. One more trick. Give me the backstab. I need max damage. Swing. Swing. Wind up parry. Swing. Play the wounds. I actually don't care about the fatigues anymore. That's not the issue. I'm in a race. Oh my god, I predicted the teleport. That's actually crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. What I will say, though, is we're dead now. <laughs> I think I'm dead. 120 damage coming in. I have to kill two of these guys. Or I have to do 176 damage. Or I have to stun him. These are, by the way, unstunnable. They have stun immunity. Oh, God. I, I'm just dead. What a shame. I kind of called this guy was going to be the, the bane of my existence. The other elite was beatable for me. The other very hard one. Which, by the way, if you don't go back to my other episodes and watch, he's someone that does clones and you have to do, like, a damage to the clones and they'll pop. And you have to find the real one. The burn build is not too bad for dealing with him because, you know, you'll just slowly do AOE burn damage and he'll just die over time. But this guy is really fucking weird, as I said. Stunning him is kind of, like, bad. Do, do I have any answer? I really don't. I needed another, another power move on the bow. Even then, the bow doesn't save me. Yeah. He just teleported into the worst spot, even though it's where I predicted. It just doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Do 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 do. Or does it? Hang on a minute. Does this knock me back? It doesn't. If this had knock back on it, I actually had an out. Unfortunately, I don't anymore. The other thing I was just trying to think if I could have ever done it is fireballed me into him to stun him. I just needed like a movement ability. What's my other card? Uh, no, shield charge wouldn't have saved me either. It would have given me more permutations to think about it, but yeah, it's over. All right, uh, let's just do max damage then. Fire bottle him, fire bottle me as well, why not? Burn him. Max damage is actually throwing oil at him now. And then... Give him a good old meme. We put him on a timer, but it didn't matter. He just pops you. 
And that's all my health gone in one. It was still a really good run. I, as I said, I think the one thing I was missing was just some more answers. But also, as I, I mentioned before, I think other than the fact that I was doing this recording and it was, you know, the, the first run of the full release. And by the way, you get these run histories. Oh my god, next run is 69. Oh, sweet. We have to do well for that. I probably would have not done that Elite. I don't think the rest was worth fighting the Elite for in the third world because they are super scary. And especially that guy, very hard to deal with. Anyway, that'll do for this episode. If you enjoyed it, why not leave a like and subscribe? Everything helps me out. Uh, I don't know what else I'm going to put on the channel tonight. I'm, there may be nothing else that goes on the channel tonight. It's a really scuffed day for me. Just to do a minor update at the end. Uh, my roommate's coming back with a night shift in like an hour's time. So I don't want to record while she's asleep because like it's a really scummy thing for me to do. Since she works at a hospital as well. So I won't do that. So I won't be able to record to at least like 6pm. I'll put this up at 5pm. And it'll just depend how I feel. Like, as I said, I feel a little bit sick right now. I can just keep food down at this point. Yesterday morning, I just couldn't keep anything down, even water. So that's what, like, well, I can't record. I, I basically can't, you know, sit up without being sick. Or retching. But I don't feel too bad now. So maybe I'll record something at six. Maybe I'll do a... I was going to say a road warden, but I want to do a longer road warden part. Maybe I'll do a Pokemon... Unbound. That's what was meant to come out at 5pm anyway, but maybe I'll record it like 8pm and put it up at 11 or something. And then I'll try and get a bruise day maybe on Thursday or something. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but we'll try and get two things out today. Anyway, uh, check this game out as well as the other thing I would say, the 1.0.3. By the way, if you want to know what the point three is now, there was a small patch which improved Dutch and Spanish localization. So if you're Dutch or Spanish, the mod maker has your back. He's improved... What I presume is like the card texts. And I hope we see more updates to this game. And I would love to see some mods that aren't just like sprite changes. Because I think there could be some really insane things you could do with this game. Really fun things as well. So I'm going to look out for anyone doing mods. And yeah, just a great game. Just go and get it. It's great. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.